do something. Chuck, I said don't just sit there. I'm standing up and I'm doing something. Do you know, I've got three draws out of five so far and that's more or less a world record for me. Oh, not your pools, love. Not now. Come on. Get them wash leathers out. Give them windows a rub over. Give the what? The windows! Not more, Mum. Don't bother me now, love. Now, tell me, is this lipstick all right? It's not too pinky, is it? Now, go on, tell me if it is. Well, it is a bit. Oh, well, blow it. It'll have to do. You're, uh, bringing them back here after, are you? Yeah, why? Nothing. You know what she means, don't you? Now, look, I won't tell you again. Get them wash leathers out and get them windows done. What for? What for? Only a man could ask, and a daft one at that. Two words out of you and that kid stops where she is. That kid, as you call her, is being christened today. That kid is going where I say she's going. And if you're that keen on a christening, get yourselves done. Might get some of that muck off your faces. I went vicar asked what names, tell him Morkham and Wise. No, as you were, you're funny enough. I'll crack him one before the day's out. Oh, Mum. Now, look, Ray... We've got people coming, and look at them windows. What's up with them? Oh, oh forget it, love. Except the fact you married a slob. Oh, aye. I'm a slob, am I? I wouldn't be a slob if I got eight drawers up, would I? How many have you got? Four, as it so happens. Then you're a slob. Where's your wash leather? On the sink. Right. Oh, and he'd let me and all. Too true, I would. Me and me frock, and he'd let me wash mucky windows. Well, what do you think I'm wearing, me flipping overalls? I was going to ask. What's that round your neck? A traffic accident? Look... Seeing as I'm the woman of this house and the mother of the child, do you think I could just have two words? Just two? Yes, love. Go ahead. Well, I was wondering about what shawl we're going to put on her. I've given it you. Well, yeah, I know you've given it me, ma'am, but... Well, Mrs Sharples went to an awful lot of trouble. I mean, it must have been agony for her knitting that other one. Her eyesight can't be all that good. Are you saying what I think you're saying? That was your shawl. Your father bought it. Yeah, I know. Couldn't we use it for the next one? You what? Ignore him. Now, look, let me get this straight. You mean you'd rather use a shawl that's been knitted by a neighbour than the one I've given you? I am your mother. I know you're my mother. That's why I'm asking. I don't mind rowing with you. Who does? Shut up, Ray. Look, I told you to ignore him. It's the only way to treat that one. If I'd ignored him in the first place, we wouldn't be arguing about the christening shawl now, would we? Don't be vulgar. Ah, dear Empect of Weatherfield, it is obvious you are a very kind and considerate fella. By all means, shoot your wife and mother-in-law, because no jury on earth would convict you. Bah, you know what you're talking about, you do. Pity you didn't ignore the registrar when he asked you to take on that load of rubbish. Well, 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 fancy seeing a fellow like you in a place like this on a Sunday morning. You should be at home with your family enjoying yourself. I couldn't agree more, Mrs Shaffles. Only some of us haven't got families to enjoy ourselves with. Why well, you want to get out and find yourself one? Or is that what you're doing here, putting your feet on the table, eh? Helping her out. You can't wait to get folk married off, can you? Is that the only time you get a good meal, when you go to uh, wedding receptions? Oh, shit. Well, physically, she's not too good. Mentally, she's better off than I am. I mean, all she has to do is lie in that warm bed and not worry. And I don't even know what I can sell on a Sunday. Oh, it's now but common sense, lad. It's what folks need, like tea and things. Oh, well, I'm blowed if I can make a detail of it. Anyway, if I go to prison, I won't work these hours. <laughs> uh, what can I get you? Quarter of tea. I should have known. Are you sure this is right? Well, she's never refused me. And that's the right money. I'll trust you, Mrs Sharples. I just wish we were the customers as honest as you are. <laughs> right. We've got some bad luck coming up. Morning. I don't know what your bad luck is, Squire, but you're all right now cos we're here, aren't we, Sandy? And I can't tell a lie, he's first. He opened the door and I nicked in. After you, Your Grace. Uh, well, it's uh, about me, thanks. Oh, yes, Stanley. Can I have some money first? Well, can't you...? No, I can't. You've had your less pen of the tick off me. Cracking on that Rena said it was all right. Well, I thought she had. Well, never mind about all that. Let's just put it down to wishful thinking and leave it at that. Right. No, let's not leave it at that, because you owe me the money now. I put the money in the till. Well, I'll tell Ella. Yeah. I'll tell Ella. Thanks so much. Good. Uh, makes you lose faith in human nature, doesn't it? I mean, he's a nice enough lad. Bone idle, but pleasant with it. It's funny, that. Do you know, he'll bend over backwards to get a shilling's worth of tick out of you, and yet he resents every eighth of energy he uses cleaning windows. Now, that is money. It really is the root of all evil. That's what gives me me pleasant nature. I haven't got none. Yeah, can you keep your voice down? I've got a terrible headache. Say no more, Squire. I'll come and get what I came for and be on me way. Oh, well, I'll have to weigh those. We sell them by the pound. Well, no point, is there? You're only going upstairs. Hey. You know, for the invalid who owns the place. Bring money into it, we'll only confuse ourselves, won't we? Have some aspirins, please. I'll tell you what, love. 
You find them, or we'll go halves. Now, isn't this nice? Do you know, you're the first to bring me so much as a good wish. There's not enough consideration in this world. No, you're quite right. And you without two anus to rub together and all. Now, listen, I'm not letting you spend your social security on bananas for me. Now, how much were they? 20p? Uh, no. No, now, I'd feel much better if you did. Yeah, but no, I'll... No, now, now, listen, I won't tell us all. Come on. Oh, well, if it makes you feel better. That's right, well, it does. Now, what's going on in the outside world? Now, let me see. I'd ask Alf, only poor lad, he's rushed off his feet. Hey, don't knock him, he's better than nothing. I know, I know he is, and I'm very grateful. And so you should be. Now, let me see. Uh, Liverpool got beat, but then so did Everton, so that's all right. Uh, the Langton's baby's being christened today. Hey, is it today? As ever was. Do you know, I'm surprised he didn't have me for the godfather. Oh, come on. Well, who's nearer the mafia than me? <laughs> Here you Have a banana. Oh, sorry. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you know, I'm not all that keen on bananas. Go on, you can act that. Oh. Right. I'll go and get her. No, you don't. That baby stops where she is until the taxi comes. Deirdre, she's crying. Yeah, it's an habit babies have. Now watch it. You've been very good, <clears> the <throat> pair of you. We haven't had a single snarl for at least an hour. Let's keep it that way. Mother, don't let me have to tell you again. She stays where she is. And don't get at him. When is the taxi coming, Raymond? Well, mother-in-law, remembering what you once said about us not chucking us money around, I've decided not to bother with the taxi. We're going in the van. We are not. Me in these clothes. Mother. You're not getting me in any van. Mother is having you on. Oh, Tracy. Come down here and talk a bit of sense to your mother. Nobody else can. It's one of the babbies that haven't changed these days, bless them. And they lose their innocence of sight sooner than they did. That's the inexorable march of progress. Ah, I don't call it progress. You know, when I was a girl, the christening was a celebration. All the congregation were there, watching and sharing in it. These days, they sneak in and they sneak out. I wonder they don't lock the church door behind them. Well, I wouldn't dare do that to you. By gum, they wouldn't. Hey, which one do I wear? You're asking? Ah, go on, put me out of my misery. Well, that one, without any shadow of doubt. What, my wedding hat? Oh, well, it was me that said it was a celebration, didn't I? I don't remember much about my own christening, but uh, I was told about it. The church was full to busting. All my relatives come, both sides. I had an aunt and uncle who come from Cleethops, and that wanted something to do in the other days, I'll tell you. And the presents. Oh, my mum said she couldn't see the sideboard for presents. Oh, which reminds me, uh, I want to give little Langton something. Of course you should, you're a godfather. It's a very special something that was given to me. A silver rattle, a very elegant silver rattle. You mean mine, the one Mrs. Aslam gave me? That's the one. I see. Well, let me set you straight on one count. I didn't give that rattle to you. I gave it to your two children. So, strictly speaking, it isn't yours to give. It's still here. Yes, I suppose it is. This isn't something you can break into, is it? I go on, things were meant to be used and I never was one for ornaments anyway. Good. And it's a very nice thought at that. And there's not many of them to the pound these days. <laughs> Betty, what? Don't forget names. Roxina Bernadette. Oh, I'll well, Roxina Bernadette, you lady. <laughs> oh, hello. No one told me about any royal visit. We didn't want to make too much fuss. <laughs> Thank you, darling. She thought I meant it. Yes, well, we're like that up north. We believe out anybody tells us. Hello, darling. Still writing for Mike and Bernie, are we? Uh, where's the little fellow with a flat cap? Is that his denim suit, then? Yeah. Could have put the brigade of guards on the canvas with the stuff I've used in this. Ah, there he is. The man of the moment. Is that my prize? Yeah. Right, give it here. Uh -uh. Not till we've had our pound of flesh. Or in your case, half a ton. I was so flaming cheeky. I'm sorry, Albert. It's the excitement of the moment. Look, I've got a couple of uh, press photographers coming at quarter past two. I thought a couple of shots of you outside your house with a couple of nice dolly birds, you yeah, know. Yeah, well, you can think again. Now, Albert. I've said you can think again. I've seen them things. 
Yeah, but you haven't changed your mind, eh? I mean, you're still going to wear it. I mean, it's a work of art. Look. Yeah, but that's not a word in house for cleaning up. And I'm not having any pictures taken outside either. It's a bottle of rum goes with it. Go on, Albert. Be a devil. Albert? <laughs> Come through to it back and put it on, love. I can't wait. I think it's them. Hello again, Mrs. Langton, and how are you? Very well, thanks. And this is... Tracy Lynette. Tracy Lynette. Well, shall we get inside and um, wet her head for a change? <laughs> oh, OK, that's it. Oh, yeah. Come on, then. Yeah, come on. Oh, dear. <laughs> children to be baptized must affirm their allegiance to Christ and their rejection of all that is evil. It is your duty to bring up this child to fight against evil and to follow Christ. Therefore I ask, do you turn to Christ? I turn to Christ. Do you repent your sins? I repent of my sins. Do you renounce evil? I renounce evil. You have brought this child to baptism. You stand in the presence of God and his church. You must now make the Christian profession in which she is to be baptized and in which you will bring her up. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son Jesus Christ who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who sanctifies the people of God? I believe and trust in him. You know, I can do with church. You won't get you saying all them things you can't credit. Yeah, it's hypocrisy, isn't it? No, I meant every word. No, oh, I mean about saying things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of it about. I mean, you take Bolton. Every cold snap, that prison chapel will be full. There'll be every villain in Merseyside there coming out with the Ten Commandments. Get back to the cell, they'll be nicking the ears out of your comb. Mind you, some of it was good. What is thy duty towards thy neighbour? My duty towards my neighbour is to love him as myself and do to all men as I would they should do unto me. To love, honour and obey my father and mother and obey and honour the Queen and all who are putting authority under her. To submit myself to Where'd the... you learn all that? Well, it's the catechism, innit? That was confirmed. Confirmed? Yeah. Well, it was something to do one January. Obey the Queen and all, all that are putting authority under her. Yeah, it was Sir Robert Mark that's putting authority under her, mate. And the rest of all the coppers. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. It's Hippocratic, innit? See, you've upset him now. Big church gore is Mr Baldwin. <laughs> Flame Nora. I look a right twerp. Albert, you look lovely now. Come on through and let's have a proper look at you. Come on, Albert. You told me you were going to get rid of all this lot. Now, have you tried getting rid of Stan and Eddie at closing time? Any road, you deserve an audience. Have you seen yourself? Yeah, whose idea you were it, any road? Albert, believe you me, we're on a winner. Look. We'll have the photos taken in here, all right, behind closed doors. Just you and a couple of Dolly Birds. Oh, he doesn't want us. Yeah, you can get in the picture if you like, but don't take the mickey. As if we would. Can I have a suit like that? Go on. Pretend you think he's sexy. What do you mean? Pretend. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, just brought you a cup of tea. What time is it? Uh, about quarter past two. Oh, have you had your dinner yet? Yeah, well, I got what I wanted. <laughs> oh, oh, you start. I thought we'll be thinking things. Oh, they will, won't they? <laughs> What's happening? No, I think they've all gone to christening. Oh, yeah, little love. Hey, I hope they dry her off properly. We don't want her catching cold. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Name this child. Tracy Lynette. Tracy Lynette. I baptise you in the name the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I sign you with the sign of the cross. To show that you must not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified, and manfully to fight under his banner, 
against sin, the world, the world and, and the devil, and to continue Christ's faithful soldier and servant unto your life's end. I suppose you know this is a day of rest. Yeah, sorry, Alf. A quick bottle of plonk, OK? Uh, you have to find it yourself. I can do. How did it go this afternoon? Any eruptions? Uh, no more than usual, no. No, I think one could say it went rather well, actually. Oh, and this, by the way, is for a do-it raise at 7 o'clock, to which I am instructed you are cordially invited. Oh, well, that's very nice of him, Ken, but... Uh, well, I've got to get myself to work at 10 o'clock, and uh, I don't much feel like parties anyway. Yeah, you sound a bit rough. Ah, I feel a bit rough and all. Oh, oh there we are. that's right, and that. Ah. Anyway, you tell him, will you? Yes, I will, and uh, look after yourself. Uh, well, I fall down there and all, don't I? I'm supposed to be looking after Reenie. Oh, yes, of course, she's laid up too, isn't it? Look, is there anything I can do? Oh, Emily, I'm sure she wouldn't mind me volunteering her no, service. No, I'm just enjoying a bit of bad health, you know. Yeah, and, and no, I made her a bit of tea, and I'll uh, take it up to get my head down for half an hour in chair and then take myself off to work. And don't worry, I've got some good mates. I won't overdo things. Yeah, we'll see that you don't. Mm. Oh, what's that, by the way? I might as well tell Reenie what I've been selling. If I don't blow my own trumpet, nobody else will. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. It's Burgoyne uh, past two grand. We're going past two grand. I won't bother. Oh, get it. Get it. Right. That does it. Come on. Get in here. What are you doing? I'm getting out of this to let you get in. Now, come on, get your clothes off and get in there. Likely, I'm all right. You're not all right, you're as all right as me, Aunt Peg. No, then, do as you're told, get in there. Ooh. And if you say it's not healthy, then neither are you. Right, salmon sandwiches in my left hand and ham in my right. Oh, lovely. Deirdre, you've not put the plates round long. Oh, sorry. Don't worry about plates, they won't be outside me that long. Oh, well, don't be such a pig. I'm not being a pig, I'm hungry. Anyway, this is a party and people behave like this at parties. Right. Oh, yeah. Not at yeah. one of yeah. parties, you don't. You behave yourself yeah. and you make speeches. <laughs> come on, Ken. What, oh, no, no, yeah, no, no, on. not me. No, if anybody's going to make a speech tonight... It's Mr. Sharples. Hey. I mean, how could I compete with such experience? <laughs> I'm making no speeches tonight. Well, give us one of your poems then, lovey. There's an idea. Yes, come poem. Yes. 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 Well, I only know one that's suitable for this sort of an occasion, and it's not very cheerful. Well, come to think of it, it would fit with one or two families round here, though thankfully not this one. That welcome little bonny bread, but shouldn't have come just went I did, cos times is bad. We sure to publish for our job, but well, that, of course, they wouldn't know, would still add. But though we're children two or three, we'll find a bit of room for thee, bless the lad. That prettiest bread we got it nest, so watch up closer to me breast. I'll be dad. Oh, oh, oh dear Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'll fight hey, anybody that little, says I'm not. Ah, <laughs> little thing. No, she's <laughs> <in> lovely. <laughs> I brought you a cup of tea. Oh, what time is it? About half past seven. Half past seven? Hey, you were right. Oh, I went out like a light. Yeah, well, there's a cup of tea and a couple of aspirins. Try and repeat the performance. Hey, just answer me one question. What the heck am I doing in here? Do you know, that's a question somebody else might ask an all. What is this widower doing in this unmarried lady's bed, they might say? What do I tell them? Well, you tell them the truth. You tell them exactly what I told that friend of yours. Oh, did he get on to? Oh, Jeff, somebody or other. Jeff Turnbull, oh, he got a right one there. He's got a vivid imagination. Oh, well, has he? Well, if that's what he thinks, why bother? Come on, look. Hey, up! You see? Oh, you said to me, you said, are oh, you not scared, love? I said scared. If there's anybody scared there, it's certainly not me. Get to sleep. Hey, you're getting very mellow in your old age. Well, I'm a dad now, aren't I? You're a husband as well, remember. <laughs> Forget about that, you've had it now. From now on. Oh, don't joke about it. They say that's what happened. Yeah, well, there are some pretty horrific forecasts, I <coughs> grant you. I mean, what is it the prophets of doom say? That Tracy, by the time she's 25, will have to spend £200 on a pound of butter. Can't see it myself. I think it'll end before then. That's probably precisely what the Germans said. Look what happened to them. He took a big suitcase to carry enough money to buy a loaf of bread. Yes, and look at them now. Well, maybe by the time Tracy's 25, we'll be as prosperous as they are. Oh, I wish yeah, I could I think mean... so. Oh, what's it matter? It's being happy that counts. 
If you read the blooming newspapers, you'd expect to find us all sitting in corners, cracking his eyes out. Look at us! Yeah, yeah. yeah quite a bit. I have to prove your point, Mrs. Sharples. Oh, Here comes another happy yeah. victim. All in order, Mrs. Walker. Fred's old in the fort. Oh, right then, what do I wet baby's head with? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Are you asleep, love? Huh? Don't strain the sack. Well, if it's any consolation to you, miss now. All I got were a couple of glasses of warm lager and a curly ham sandwich. Still, I did get to old baby, which I suppose is as near as I'll ever get. <sighs> Can't wait to get undressed and get into my bed. I'll tell you summit. I'm going to take it easy on that per node. It has some very funny side effects. I had a couple while Annie were out at work. Do you know, I even started fancying Fred. Hey, do you reckon he's still awake? Do you reckon if I went and threw pebbles up at his window, he'd get out of bed? I'm talking of fancying, Miss Bradshaw. How are you making out with lover boy? They made a grab for you yet? Because don't worry, he will. I've seen that look in his eye and he's up to no good. He's not just here to play shopping, Alf. Why don't you just tell him you fancy him? I mean, don't just tell me. Oh, please yourself. Give him a couple of days and if he don't make a grab, get rid. But if your auntie bet knows out, he will. Do you know what I think I'll do? I think I'll put my black negligee on and my high heeled slippers. Nip down back entry and throw stones at Fred's window. You never know your luck. What are you doing here? What are you doing there? I live here. You live in there. Who? Who? Alf. Do you not know? Alf. Hello. It's a bit late for flaming hellos. Why didn't you say something? Well, you never give me a chance. I gave you every flaming chance. What's he doing in there? Too poorly. That's not all he could have took, neither. Hell's bells. What's up? I'm just remembering some of the things I said. I have not forgotten them, neither. <laughs> it's time to make an appointment with the surgeon over on Granada Good Life now. Here on Granada Plus, stay with us for a spot of Anglo-Antipodean intrigue in families. <laughs> 